Before all that, I want to talk to you about law and order. You see, we British like to consider ourselves a country worth with values that are worth defending and extolling to the world. One of the, the most precious values is law and order. A nation without property rights, you see, and robust protection by the enforcers of the rule of law can never be a free nation. You cannot reasonably assume that what is yours will remain yours if the guardians of your right to own property don't show up to defend what's yours when you need them. But that's what's taking place today in lawless Britain. This week, I had a friend of mine, he had his bag nicked in London, and he told me that he knew exactly where this bag was. You see, modern technology, it's a wonder. He had tracking data from his laptop. So this bag containing his passport and other personal effects was quickly written off by the cops as irretrievable, despite the fact he could tell them exactly where this bag was. And the police say there's now they can do, move on, now to see here, folks. And this isn't, I'm afraid, an isolated one-off case. There are many of you out there that have gotten in touch with me with your concerns around this. And a significant report by Andy Cook, Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Constabulary, has documented deep defects in police forces' handling of crimes like theft, robbery and burglary. Fewer than one in 20 thefts, that's one in 20, and one in 15 burglaries result in a criminal being caught and charged. That is a pathetic number, if you ask me. And as you might be aware, the Conservatives pledged 20,000 cops in their 2019 election winning manifesto to replace those that were cut. And both Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak have committed to meeting that target. But I ask is, what use is such a target? We could have an extra 100,000 coppers. And unless their priorities actually align with our own, what's the point in them? It seems that the police are policing political correctness more and more but not, seemingly, law and order. We want real crimes investigated, not non-crime hate incidents being recorded, or well in as they are. And while I'm at it, for posing for pictures at pride festivals in activist charity Stonewall emblazoned pride cars that look better suited to Coco the Clown and not Colin the Copper, it's not a great look. I mean, ask yourself this. What most do you get, do you want the cops to actually investigate? It would be a burglar in a theft over a few tweets online in this day and age. Do we actually tell them that you want a hate crime to be investigated, that you want a burglar potentially that misgendered you, or you could say that he used your hose pipe and actually get the police to investigate that, that the burglar wolf whistled at you, maybe that would get the police to take action, or maybe he sent you an offensive tweet or made a non-PC joke on Facebook, maybe that would get the cops to act. The things that the police will and won't investigate are quickly becoming a woke joke. And senior coppers blame cuts. But I ask you, what criteria must be now be hit to actually allow the plod to take things seriously? Most want to get policing off of our tweets and onto our streets. And it shouldn't be the role of the police to soothe the petulance of the permanently offended. It should absolutely be the role of the police to investigate and charge those that have stolen something that you've worked damn hard for, thank you very much. Some brave lads and lasses gallantly work in the force each day to keep us all safe. And we'll be doing them a massive favour if we actually remind the upper echelons of the force of their day job. Because after all, right, they're Britain's police force. They're not Twitter's police force. <laughs>